Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, dynamic subscriptions in Power BI, how to uh, generate a filtered view of the same general report for different recipients of the report and send the export to them as a PDF or PowerPoint uh, on a scheduled basis, which is called dynamic subscription. Let's go and check it out. Before showing you um, dynamic subscription as an example, I want to first explain what it is because the name of the feature isn't really self-explanatory. Uh, we have similar feature uh, in reporting services old SSRS uh, was called a data-driven subscription that is not also much self-explanatory. So what this is about, assume this scenario, let's say you have a general report, this report has data categorized by departments, branches, cities, countries, different sales representatives, uh, any ways that you can categorize it. So that report includes all of those categorizations. And uh, what you want to do is to send scheduled uh, export of this report as a PDF or PowerPoint uh, into email address of recipients. Uh, well, you can do that with normal subscription in Power BI. We have that already for many years. So what is this dynamic subscription then? Dynamic subscription is talking about the scenario that you want to send that uh, report, but you want to send filtered view of that report in a way that each recipient receives a different view. For example, if you are talking about sales report and having different uh, sales departments or sales representative for each country, for example, United States, Canada, Australia, the uh, sales rep of United States will receive a snapshot and a PDF exported of the report only filtered for United States, or a Canada sales rep will receive that only filtered for Canada. Uh, uh, Australia will receive that only for um, her own country. That is the filtered view of the report. And that is possible with this feature called dynamic subscription, uh, which as I said, in reporting services, we used to uh, call this feature data-driven subscription. Uh, there are some limitations, there are some considerations, uh, but let me first show you how this works and then we'll have a look at the limitations. So to get this started first, you need to have a Power BI report. This report can be basically any report. So what I have here, just to explain to you, I have this report that has these two main tables. One is the sales table, the other one is sales territory table. I use uh, AdventureWorks as most of my examples. Uh, these two tables are connected based on sales territory key, sales territory table is the table that has um, my categorizations in it. In this case, that categorization is basically the country information. So as you see here, I have sales territory key and some information, but the main important one for me is this. Uh, I have sales territory country, which has Canada, France, Germany. So in my report, which you are looking at it here, I have sales sliced and diced by country and the sales of each country. I have a total sales in a card visual over here and I have sales by different regions. Some countries might have multiple regions. For example, in US we have Southwest, East, um, Southeast, Northwest, that, that kind of thing. So nothing in particular is needed to be done on the report itself. The report, you develop it like a normal report. It's not like that you have to create a parameter or you have to create a filter or anything like that. The report is just like that, a normal report. Um, you publish it to the Power BI service. That is the main thing that um, dynamic subscription is a service feature. You cannot set it up in the Power BI desktop. In desktop, you just build your report, but in the service, that is the place that you actually uh, go and set it up. So in the Power BI service, I have this report published. I'm going to open it, um, so called dynamic subscription, here it is. And when I open my report, I have this button at the top of the report that I can subscribe to report. Now we had this feature for a long time. When you click on it, you can actually set up a subscription. Now I already have one subscription. I'm going to um, delete that and create a new one. Um, so when you create a new subscription, you have two options to create a standard subscription, uh, which is like pretty generic. The, 
uh, all the recipients will receive exactly the same type of um, snapshot. There is no uh, per recipient view of the data. And the one that I'm going to show you, which is called dynamic subscription, is this dynamic per recipient. So you select this because you want, for example, sales rep of United States to receive United States sales data. Um, when you select that, there are some configuration to set. Now, the very first thing is that you need a table that has recipients data in it. You can call it recipients data table. Now, unfortunately, which is one of the features I don't like, one of the things I don't like about this feature is that you cannot just upload that table over here. There is no way to add an Excel file or connect it to a SQL Server database table or anything like that. That table should live inside a semantic model, which is a Power BI data set. Um, now that model can be exactly the same model that you have your report already in it, or it can be any other models. It doesn't have to be uh, exactly that model. Now, what I have done is I've created a table. I put it in the same model, uh, in the same uh, semantic uh, model in the same data set, but you can keep it separate. So what I've done, I've created this table. I called it mapping table. It's a pretty simple table. There are two columns that this table must have. One is the email address of the recipient, what email address they have so that you can uh, connect it to, uh, to this configuration and say this is the email address that they will receive and then the field in which you are filtering the data so um, remember that I have my report slicing and dicing by country and that is what I want to filter data based on so I want for example sales rep of Canada to receive Canada's information so country here is my filtering column or filtering field the name of that doesn't necessarily need to match the name that you have in your data set in the sales 3.3 table. Um, we have a mapping uh, section that we will map them. And the email address is the email address of the rece receiver. Right, so this table, you can create it in Excel, you can create it inside Power BI itself uh, with Interdata, you can create it inside a SQL Server database table. It can live inside the same data set or it can be in a different data set. If it is in the same data set, as you see, I've added here, it doesn't need to be related to your other tables. It can be just separated just like that, right? So I have this table over here. Now, when I go back to my, uh, my setup, for recipient data table, I select my data set because that is where I have this table. Um, there are some types of fields that is acceptable here. Now the table that I have has these two fields. And one of the things that I, uh, another things that I don't really like about this is that if this table is hidden in your semantic model, you know, in semantic model in the data set, Power BI data set, you can hide tables, technical tables like this table. This is a table that you don't necessarily need that in a, reporting view. Uh, but if that table is hidden, you can then select it here, which is one of the limitations. Anyway, this feature is preview and I'm sure this will have a lot of enhancement when it comes out as a general um, availability. Um, so I'll select that table, which has the columns, col country and email address. Then I go to the next step. Um, this step, the most important part about this step is that you want the recipients to receive emails um, um, based on what their email address is. So you don't want manual email address. So you can say get from data and choose the email address in that table. So this will be the email address that they will receive. The subject, you can have one subject for all of them, but you might say, well, I want the subject also to come from data. Now, country name itself is not a good subject. So I might go and say, I would create a calculated column inside Power BI saying that um, sales report for, and then add country on, on, on that, like a simple concatenation. Uh, but I don't want to do it now. Let's keep it simple. I'll just select that country as a subject. And then you can add some message. Hi, uh, this is your sales report, something like that. Uh, whatever message you want. And the rest is just some generic configurations. For example, what is the um, what is the format you want this to go out? What is uh, like PDF or PowerPoint uh, and, and anything around that. So once you have selected that, then you can click on uh, next. My mouse isn't seem to be working, so I'll use tab. 
Uh, I'll go to the next and this is also an important step as well. We want the uh, mapping uh, of your data. So mapping of the data is which column in the mapping table is going to filter which column in your Power BI data set. In my case, the country column in the mapping table is going to filter the um, is going to filter the um, sales territory tables um, sales territory column. So here I add the filter and the report uh, field I'm going to filter is sales territory country and the column value of that comes from my mapping table country. So that is how you map these together. If you have applied some filters on the report itself, there will be an option here to include the filter you applied already or you can just skip that. Um, and then the next step is just the schedule itself. For example, you want to run this from now for about a week or a month. Uh, you can run it at the frequency of once a day if you want to. You can set it to be refreshed, uh, to be done after your uh, data set refresh or semantic model refresh, uh, but would be more than, uh, wouldn't be more than once a day. Um, for example, I can set it to be done at, let's say, um, 6 p.m., uh, 6.45 p.m., and, and that's it. Then you set it uh, and save it and close. So that is my uh, subscription created and ready to uh, to use. Now, when the time comes, uh, just showing you the result, when the time comes, I've already had this subscription as you saw before, uh, an email will be generated. So this is the email generated for the email account that was the recipient of United States data. So this email has that subject, which I didn't really set it properly. It was just a country name. A snapshot of the report, which you can see is United States data only, um, and the regions of United States. And if I uh, open that report, uh, the PDF version of that report, you can also see that this is uh, United States data. Now the PDF seems to take a little bit of time to load. I'll probably just download it. And once downloaded, I would open it over here. So this is that United States data, as you can see. Now, one important thing about um, this setup is that you still have to share the report with the recipients. Because if I go and use this option that says go to report, I wouldn't be able to see that uh, with this user if I don't have access to the report. So when you share that report with the recipients, when you add them in the subscription, it doesn't automatically share that report. It doesn't give them access to the report, which is one of the other things I would like to see some enhancement about it in for this feature. So you have to actually share this report with them in any of the methods of sharing you would use, uh, like you might put it in a workspace, add Power BI apps on top of it, and add those uh, as an audience users of your Power BI app, and then share it with them. So that is an important thing to do. Another thing about this is the um, is the licensing. So this feature works with premium and fabric capacities at the moment. It doesn't work with normal Power BI Pro account. And that is one limitation. There are some limitations about this feature at the moment. One of them is um, one of them is that um, you cannot have more than 50 recipients at a time. Usually you wouldn't need more than that, but 50 is the limitation at the moment. Um, the Those items that I mentioned already, like when you um, add people as a recipient from that mapping table, it doesn't necessarily automatic, it doesn't automatically uh, give them access to the report. So you have to do that separately. So hopefully this will be automatically done um, as an enhancement of this feature. Another thing is that your mapping data table or recipients data table have to be loaded inside the Power BI data set, which is kind of good because it's centralized the data. Uh, but on the other hand side, having a flexibility of just uploading an Excel file or a SQL server Server database table connection or even a data flow would be nice to have. Um, the other thing is, um, as I mentioned um, previously in the reporting services, we had uh, ability to do expression based things. So I would really like to, when I go to subscribe the report, when I do that settings, I would like especially the 
email details part of it to be expression based. For example, I want my email subject to be done with, using an expression. A simple expression uh, based thing here would be helpful. For example, sales data for, and then add country column in it. Um, I can do that at the moment inside my Power BI data set, but the point is that here having that ability would help. For example, the message, it, of the email itself can be also expression based. So these are enhancements that I'm sure um, Microsoft team would consider it and um, would have a look at it to see if they can add it before making this feature generally available. But in all, this is a really cool feature. One other thing you might ask is that how different this is compared to uh, dynamic role level security or role level security in general. Uh, dynamic role level security and dynamic subscriptions are totally different things. They are not the same thing. Dynamic role level security is about the security. So if I create roles for each of these countries and give access to the users of those roles to their own country, they would only see their own country. They would not be able to see other countries' data. Versus in dynamic subscription, if they have access to the report, if they come and see the report, they would be able to see other information as well for other branches. Um, unless you apply dynamic role of security on top of it. So dynamic subscription doesn't have security on it. It's all about automatic subscription sending exported view of the data. If you are interested to learn about dynamic role of security, uh, I have some other videos about it, go and check them out. Um, so in general, this feature helps you to create automatic um, exported, filtered exported view of your report to different recipients without you needing to manually copy the data, manually apply filters on top of it and manually send it to others. So very good feature, definitely. Uh, but it has some limitations. It's a preview feature. So I hope these limitations would be lifted soon so that you can um, use it in any way you want. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Mm -hmm.